My best friend and I have played Mad Libs since we were kids, and we often play them together as adults on road trips. We're always looking for ways to make them even more interesting and funny, and now that AI art has arrived on the scene, it was a perfect match. So here's how this works. We send each other the words for a Mad Lib. We then enter those words into our Mad Libs, and we run each sentence through mid-journey to create art to go along with it. Then, we get together, share what we created, and hilarity ensues. <laughs> Hello, my darlings, and welcome back to the channel. If you're new, please come in and make yourself at home. My name is Patty Cake, and welcome to Patty Cake Games. And uh, wake up there, Brent. <laughs> no, I was, I was, I was yelling, not yawning. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was, I was play yelling. <laughs> so, it is, it is, this is the last episode of season one of Mid Journey Mad Libs. We have done it. We've done an entire season of a show. And, uh, and we're coming back. We're coming back. We're going to take a little break, but we're going to come back. But uh, let's just get the ball rolling on this episode and enjoy this last episode while we can. Uh, before we begin, look down below the video. Click on the like button. Click on the subscribe button. Maybe even click the notification bell. That'll let you know when new videos are posted to the channel. And also, like and subscribe just helps out this channel a lot. Share it with people. You know, bring your friends in. Tell them, hey, have you seen these guys? They're funny. We, well, we think we're funny. I don't know if you think we're funny. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so let's get started. If you don't know what Mad Libs are, I feel... Uh, I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. <laughs> go yeah. go and look up some Mad Libs. Go get a book. Play some Mad Libs with your friends. Basically, it's a big block of text with some blanks in it. The blanks ask for things like nouns and verbs and adjectives. We ask our partner for those things. They provide them to us, but they have no idea what the box of text is. And then to add it, uh, add a, a little extra wrinkle to it, we uh, we run those sentences through Mid Journey and come up with AI generated art, and then we present them to each other in this format, and we laugh, and uh, and we have a great time. And we think you will too. So let's get started with my first Mad Lib. Hey guys, sorry to interrupt the video. You may be wondering how you can keep in touch with us after the season ends and while you're waiting for the next season to begin. Well, first of all, you can always just rewatch all the episodes from season one. We'd love that. You can also write comments on all of our videos. Trust me, one or both of us will see them and we will respond. But the best way, the absolute best way that you can keep in touch with us while you're waiting for season two is to join the Discord. If you look down in the description of the video, there's a link link to my Discord. The Discord is for everything associated with my channel, but we welcome anyone and everyone to come in and just socialize with us. You can meet other people that watch the show. There's actually even a place where you can share your own AI-generated art. So anyway, that's it. I just wanted to let you know that that was there and ask you all to come and join and uh, have fun with us. So back to the video. Uh, I'm starting tonight, and my Mad Lib is called Work It Out, and it's in the style of Edward Gorey. Uh, now, if you if you're not familiar with Edward Gorey, a lot of people, I'm sure a lot of people out there probably aren't. But my first introduction to Edward Gorey was the old uh, PBS show Mystery, uh, with Vincent Price was the narrator. Edward Gorey did the opening animation for that show, uh, which I'll put a link to it in the description. You can go and take a look at it and see you know what what his animation style was. There's no skipping in Workout World. There's only working out. Probably stop and go the other way because that's not looking friendly. Uh, his legs um, are a little weird too. <laughs> yeah, there's been some definite issues with his legs. Come on. Um, it's kind of cute looking. It could be a seal. Yeah, but hmm, I've seen enough Edward Gorey's work to know that's not very cute, not very friendly. Uh, oh, okay. Set your controls to fun and get ready to bang. This one's wow. just weird. <laughs> Really. It's just weird. Uh, we've got uh, tentacles coming out of him with weird apparatuses on them and a television that's doing some sort of a readout. And it kind of looks like his legs are kind of going splayed underneath the TV. I don't know. It's weird. <laughs> I, I got the impression that this was supposed to be some sort of retro drum machine. Oh, okay. I could see that too. Yeah, he's making music. Um, and I guess the antenna is how he's tuning in to the cosmic forces that are telling well, him how yeah, to drop. Get set to bang. I mean, what do you do on drum? Oh, true. Banging? That's true. That's true. These are the exercises. There's several exercises that we will do. Uh, there's three or four. There's four exercises we're going to go through. The first one is called the wind grasp. The wind grasp. So use your belly to grab as much wind as possible and put it 
into your beautiful pouch. I'm grabbing okay. the wind. I'm grabbing the wind. <laughs> I'm I... grabbing the wind. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm imagining her like holding this wind that she's drawn in through her belly in this pouch, which apparently is on her back. <laughs> okay, I was thinking the pouch is the big sail thing that's above her head. Yeah. Once you have six pouches filled, dump them out and start over. This this kind of reminds me. There was a thing called the human bean. <laughs> Did you ever see those? They kind of look like I was, this. <laughs> I was going to go with Mrs. Potato Head. But... Okay, well, there's that too. But uh, yeah, so the, the human bean, I used to have a doll that was shaped like this. It was called the human bean. And they were very popular uh, back in the early 80s. At least I thought they were. Stop. I thought they were popular. Maybe they weren't. <laughs> the next exercise. Exercise Penny. Bend down and place a curtain on the ground in front of you. And this, you can see the impending doom. He's trouncing forward, not really paying attention to where he's going, and he's about to step on the curtain and fall and kill himself. Oh. <laughs> Stare at it until you feel super weird. Repeat as needed. <laughs> I don't know. It kind of looks like the human being again. <laughs> <laughs> or this one's more like the human cucumber. <laughs> uh, those eyes. He looks a little bit like Greedo. Well, he's staring. He's staring until he feels super weird. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, I bet he feels really weird now. Our next exercise is called the wiggle worm. <laughs> so. <laughs> Sorry. And you didn't give me either of those words. That's just what it's called. The wiggle worm. Take your, like something I'd say. Take your double chin and climb a tree with it. Like it's a hot wombat. Okay, so Mid Journey did not give me anything that resembled a wombat. All I got were bears. <laughs> I see bears and something that might be an armadillo. I just see bears. I see a bear, like a bear head at the top of the tree. He's and then there's a little it. little tiny bear on the side. And then there's a bear that looks like he's sort of merged with the tree and he's wearing a sweater. I know what's that about. <laughs> I don't know. And then there's three smaller bears standing below. And all the bears are wearing striped sweaters, every single one of them. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they're not striped sweaters. Maybe that's just how their fur grows. Oh, oh that's weird. <laughs> then take your other uvula, because you know you apparently have two, and stare at it like it's a slow loris. I thought that was cute. <laughs> that is so cute. It's not. I mean, I, I get the staring in the slow loris. Mm -hmm. Nothing about uvulas. No, no uvulas. Congratulations, you're a wiggle worm. <laughs> <That's too cute. laughs> my favorite thing about this is this person's face right here <laughs> because it almost looks like they're smiling so proudly like it's their son it's or something mom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now. It's a big deal. Um, all right and our last exercise is called the sitting mat so you get out your dangerous mat and giggle uncontrollably on it for three it's nine and three quarter minutes. <laughs> I don't I don't think they read the instructions properly. <laughs> I, don't either. I, mean, there's, I don't see a mat. Well well don't see, see, the, see giggling. I think I think that whoever whoever was doing these exercises misunderstood that they needed a dangerous mat. They thought they needed a dangerous mat to sit on. Instead, they found their friend Matt, who was murderous, and invited him over. <laughs> so this is their dangerous mat. So much. So, so, so <laughs> that beard is epic. Right? And it looks like she's like, don't you wave that knife at me. <laughs> <laughs> you, may, you may be 10 feet taller than me, but I can kick you in the shins. <laughs> <laughs> this will allow your tongue to relax. <laughs> Why is your tongue like outside of you? And angry. It's very angry. And very large. <laughs> Does it have its own teeth or is it borrowing it, your teeth? I don't know. Outside of your well, mouth. we can't see his mouth, so we don't know. So it may be its oh. own teeth or he may be borrowing his. We don't know. What's on the couch with him? I don't know. It looks like a ham hock or something <laughs> in, the, in the shape of a sickle 
<laughs> I don't know. Uh, but that will allow your tongue to relax. Feel the big blue bean bag move through you. I have I have one thing to say about this picture. <laughs> yep, 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 yep. Uh-huh. 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 Yep, 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 yep. <laughs> <laughs> so, is oh. this some new form of public transit? <laughs> he's like waving and it down. Wait, wait. <laughs> the beanbag is supposed to be moving through you. You're not supposed to be moving through the beanbag. <laughs> That's also true. Also true. Here are some dishonorable mentions. Okay, so this was... Uh, catching the wind. Yep, catching the wind. This is... Uh, Using your belly to grab as much wind as possible and put it into your Looks beautiful like pouch. She's using her throat, but I mean, yeah. You know. And uh, yeah, and it's that's very a, cool. It's a very large pouch. It's it's gathering a lot, and apparently it's. I can't tell if it's raining or snowing. It's hard to tell. It's a little bit of both. <laughs> it's very autumnal looking to me for some reason. Well, it's just the dead trees. Um, next we have. Oh, this is the same. This is the same thing. So this is what prompted me to start doing this prompt with dash dash no space pouch at the end because it was putting all of them as prints on pouches, <laughs> every one of them. So, but this one I thought was really cute because it yeah. lo- it looks like winds like spiraling into the pouch and he's like being sucked in. He's like, oh my god, help me! <laughs> thought it was cute. Oh, congratulations! Yeah, Lily. Congratulations, you're a wiggle worm. <laughs> that's what this was. Wow. Yeah, that's wow. weird. And his hand's like turning into something. Or actually, it's not. His hand is actually there, but something else is sticking out of his sleeve. I see. Not cool. And Ooh. do I have another one? I do have another one. Uh, this was. This will allow your tongue to relax. Oh. <laughs> With his weird round head with a hole in it. (laughs) With no face. Just a hole. (laughs) That's it for Edward Corey for today. Uh, But I'm pretty sure you have something equally weird and fun to share with us. So let's see what yours is. Well, I guess um, that's better than pumping on eggshells. To say the least. (laughs) (laughs) I've got something for y'all now. Um, we started this season with the D and D Mad Lib book. I think that's fire. Probably that we did. So, I can't remember if this was episode one or episode two, but it I was, believe it was, it was the both. first episode. It was both. Okay. So now we're gonna close the season with the same D and D book, Mad Lib's book. I'm kind of excited about this one. RPG or role playing game acronym sheet. In the style of Gary Gygax, there are so many formless acronyms in D and D, like GAM. <laughs> um, yeah, this guy—he's just—he's he re- just reading the Goblin Times. <laughs> he's very avid. Here's some lingo from this role exercising game. Okay. It's like it's interesting. It's almost like a character sheet. Sort it of. It does look a, a lot like a character sheet. Though I don't know. I don't know what Karain is on a character sheet or <laughs> or Klano. That's that. Those are things I'm unfamiliar with. <laughs> this would be a game um, I haven't played before. DM for Dungeon Master. The demolition expert is either your best friend or your worst dollar bill. <laughs> <laughs> that definitely looks like an angry mean DM. <laughs> yeah. It looks less like Gary Gygax than the other iterations. I don't ever remember him having a, a mohawk and a bald head together like that. Yeah, That's I don't think it's great. an intentional mohawk. I think it's just a balding pattern. <laughs> That's a weird one. Um, D20, D4, D832, etc. D stands for dice, and the number is how many dimes it has ball of dice it's I've a often, 32 right i've often <laughs> said that a really fun paperweight like if i wanted a paperweight on my desk i would get a bunch of my old dice and just hot uh, super glue them together to make like a little conglomerate ball of dice and that would be like a paperweight i never got around to it because i don't need one on my desk now but when i worked in a brick and mortar that's something i often thought of making because i have so <laughs> many dice you know 
And, or you could even go and buy one of those super duper cheap dice bags too. Mm -hmm. A, C for armor class. And of okay. course, this crosses over many genres and not just D and D. So everyone True. knows one. It's pretty much in every RPG. They have an this armor number class. is how hard you are to exhale. <laughs> <laughs> not inhale, exhale. <laughs> so inhaling is easy. It's the getting it out of you that's hard. But. All of them were in some sort of armor. Two it's of cool. them had some sort of armor that looked like it had some kind of breathing apparatus. This looks um, like it has a breathing apparatus. I like that. Um, it also looks like, like it has leaves coming off of it, which is also kind of cool. I love all of them. I'm a big fan of asymmetrical outfits. Yeah, where the different sides are different. Mm -hmm. There's the strap that goes across him instead of yeah. keep it high. Your armor class, I mean. Keep yeah. it high to avoid an injury that might clean you. Ooh la la. Oh, that's weird. I can't even make out what's happening here. So he's got... Okay, let's let's dissect this just a little bit. So he's got what looks like bizarre cleats on. Um, one foot looks like it's merging with a blue ball. And is he sort of sliding down something? <laughs> he kind of looks like he's sliding down something. Oh my gosh, I did not realize we're wearing the same shirt. Oh my god, you are. <laughs> <laughs> How weird! <laughs> no, so... <laughs> I'm sorry, this is definitely a first. I, it looked like he was skiing. Okay, like, I can kind of see that. You know, and mm -hmm. those are ski shoes. I don't know, that sounds like a very bad idea. Your ankles would be destroyed quickly. Right. NPC for non-player character. These are the DM's creepy puppets. Who steal you through the world? Oh. <laughs> okay, so we got some creepy puppets. Definitely creepy puppets. Although that girl in the front doesn't look like a puppet. She just looks like she wants <laughs> no, to murder you. I don't you. think either of those ladies look like puppets. Well, the one at the very top looks like a puppet. The other two in the middle kind of look like those oversized masks that you can get that you can't do any yeah. expression through. And then the ones at the bottom just look like murderous women. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I don't want them helping me through the world. They look like someone I need to fight. Mm -hmm. AOE or area of effects. Some spells or candy canes can reach as far as the candlestick can see. Oh, those candy canes. That's a bit suggestive. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, it's a candy cane candle. Okay, sure. <laughs> we'll go with that. <laughs> so, anyway, I like how there's little drops. Yeah, I'm that's gonna cute. keep going. That's cute. Um, <laughs> never mind. <laughs> I did not think that through. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So, what is this? <laughs> so. Only affect those standing within a small horn. Oh, okay. It does have one small horn, two big horns, and then one little small horn. <laughs> and he is, he is then within it, I guess. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> and that's an interesting spell he's doing. And he, he looks a lot like a black yak. It's, where it's, a, it's a druid. He's in his oh, black yak okay. horn. <laughs> it's a wild-shaped druid. Mm. A critical... When you roll, I love this. This is not even an that's, acronym. That's not an acronym. It's just a word. <laughs> it's a critical. When you roll your D20 and get a rock hard 20, the effect on your next action will taste. I feel like this really evokes what I feel like should happen when you roll a natural 20. I mean, there should be like a light crashing down from heaven. Everyone should oh. like be looking at it in awe. Like, oh my gosh, what did you do? Oh. If this happens, congratulations. You're on Black Olive. <laughs> and here we see the dwarf in his native Black Olive mine. <laughs> Mining for Black Olives, who apparently have mouths and want to eat him. Oh. It's very strange. <laughs> I do like the artwork itself. It's very cute. I like it too. It's it's great. Well, 
We do have some dishonorable mentions. Oh, that D20 sure. down there. That D20 down there looks like I feel like my D20 looks at me whenever I roll them. He's just like, ha ha, you're going to get a three. This one here is uh, the demolition expert is either your best friend or your worst dollar bill. And we have a whole table full of Gary Gygaxes playing D&D &E together. <laughs> <laughs> they're all Gary Gygax at different stages of his life. <laughs> so great. Oh, that sounds like a cartoon that I would <laughs> Right? Um, <laughs> next up, D20, yep. D4, D832. Um, it stands for dice, the number of how many dimes. I, lo I love how this is giving you like this. This is a description of, of all the different dice, and up there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight D4s. Do you really need that many? <laughs> <laughs> um, oh. This is keep it high. To avoid an injury that might clean you. Ooh, okay. Well, so I, I think it's too late for him to avoid an injury because, <laughs> God, I think the only thing holding his legs together are those wraps on them because those feet are all kind of wrong. And that arm, his arm is, like, not attached to his shoulder. It's, like, weirdly off to the side. And, oh, there's all kinds of weird <laughs> stuff wrong with this. <laughs> it's so messed up. It's so, so messed up. <laughs> I know what to do with it. Oh, oh that's I love cool. this one love so it. much. This is the um, NPCs. Mm -hmm. These are the DM's creepy puppets, and I think they are They awesome. are not creepy at all. They are adorable. They're so cute, and this is some great stuff. I I absolutely love it. Uh, uh, I love that type of art. Midjourney uh, does this only... a lot, this type of art, and I really love it. I, I was I was I was amazed at this when these popped up. This was so cute, but this is the area of effect uh, affecting those under a small horn. <laughs> well, there's I mean, one of them has like a little tiny horn floating above its head. So yeah, the, yeah. There's a lot of cute little things going on here. Uh, this is the same thing. Okay. Just such a divergent art that I had to put that in there. I love that. That's just, that's like a druid. The druid gathering in the woods and they're making their offerings and it's just really pretty. I love it. If this happens, congratulations. You're on Black Olive. <laughs> and I totally hear that guy's popping out of the bottle and saying that. You're on yeah. Black Olive. <laughs> and, I, and I, you know, I guess he's in a bucket of Black Olives or something. I guess. And awesome. that's it for our our final episode of the season. You know, Brent, now's the time when we would normally spin the wheel! Oh. But we yeah. can't. But we can't because we don't have any episodes next week. So there's no wheel to spin. So instead, here's a little teaser of what you can expect in season two of Mid Journey Mad Libs. <laughs> Darlings, it's me, Lady Shabligo. For those who may not remember, I first came on the scene in episode four. For Lady Shabligo. <laughs> Did I ever tell you about the time I went to my summer cabin and found a deer in my pantry? Or the time I accidentally went grocery shopping at a nudist college? My. Hi. Jimbo Dean here for Sal Slough. Are you tired of the same old dining options? Do you want to try something different? How excited are you for season two? Very! We're looking forward to it. We're so looking forward to it. We have some new art styles that we, we have played with. We've teased you with a few of those. And uh, we're really looking forward to to that. And of course, all the little extra segments we've been working on, like bringing back Lady Shablagoo and, uh, and making fun little commercials. By the way, 
Uh, I mean, the intro, Lady Shoplico, that was just introducing the character. But the commercials, just so you know, all the commercial scripts are written by AI. So I just acted out and do the art and everything. But the actual script is all written by AI. So we were trying to make this as AI-centric as possible because it's fun. All right. Uh, but that's it. That's going to do it for season one of Mid Journey Mad Libs. Thank you guys for watching us this far. Thank you guys for tuning into all these episodes. Make sure you click like and subscribe. Uh, check out other videos on my channel uh, well, while you're waiting, and we'll be back in season two. See ya. Ha 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 ha!